welcome back to His Way is Perfect. The calendar we commonly use today is undoubtedly incorrect. It does not align with the natural rhythms of life. In the United States, for example, the new year is celebrated in the middle of winter at a time when much of the plant lies dormant. However, if we were to consider the true new year, it would most likely begin in early spring when new life emerges. Recognizing this discrepancy, I became involved in an organization who believed they had reconstructed the ancient Hebrew calendar. To my surprise, I discovered that different organizations celebrated a new year at various times leaving me to question which one was correct. Motivated by this uncertainty, I embarked on extensive research, delving into the clues that might reveal the truth about the correct calendar. Along this journey, I stumbled on fascinating insights into different cultures and their calendar systems. In my quest for the correct calendar, I discovered that the path forward was not as straightforward as I had hoped. The multitude of calendar systems used by various cultures and organizations presented a challenge. Each had its own reasoning and beliefs behind their chosen dates, making it clear that they all couldn't be right. For example, Native Americans believed they had a spiritual connection with nature, which is reflected in their calendars. One such calendar is the Turtle 13-month, 28-day calendar. This calendar is based on the movements of the moon, emphasizing the lunar cycles. Many turtles have 13 segments on their shells, which are interpreted by some cultures as representing the 13 cycles of the moon that occur each year. The 28 smaller sections around the edge of the turtle represent the 28 days in a lunar month. The turtle 13-month, 28-day calendar differs from the Gregorian calendar we commonly use. Today, instead of 12, it consists of 13 months with 28 days. This creates a total of 364 days and an extra day is added as a time of reflection and celebration. The extra day often refers to the day out of time as a time of reflection, spiritual connection, and festivities within the Native American communities. It symbolizes the importance of balance and harmony of life. Another example is the Book of Enoch. It is an ancient apocalyptic text ascribed to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah. One of the sections, known as the Book of Heavenly Luminaries, or the Astronomical Book, provides a detailed description of heavenly bodies and their movements. According to this section, the year is composed of 364 days divided into four equal seasons of 91 days each. The 360-day calendar is solar, meaning it is based on the cycle of the sun rather than the moon. Each season is broken down into 30-day months, followed by one additional day at the end of each season. This adds up to 364 days. This calendar is constructed so that specific dates fall on the same day of the week. For example, the year always starts on the first day of the week and ends on the last day of the week. The 364-day year was seen as more righteous and perfect than a lunar calendar, which had approximately 354 days. It is important to note that the exact structure of this calendar and its interpretation can vary among scholars due to the complex nature of the Book of Enoch and the different versions and the translations of text. So why all this confusion? When it comes to calendars, what is the right time and how do we track it? What happened? Let's start by reading Daniel chapter 7 verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns of the kingdoms are ten kings that all shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. According to the book of Daniel, it is believed that the fourth beast mentioned would exert its power by altering times, laws, until his dominion is eventually overthrown. As of now, the dominion of the fourth beast still remains, making it improbable for anyone to possess the correct ancient Hebrew calendar that our forefathers once used. It's interesting that Christians teach about a future antichrist who will change times and laws. However, there are a few misconceptions in this theory. First, the belief that it's one man responsible contradicts the first part of verse 25, 
which states that the fourth beast represents a kingdom that would change times and laws, not an individual. Second, the assumption that these changes will happen in the future overlooks the fact that the calendar has already been altered. The prevailing belief among the majority and the masses that live here in the United States and in other countries as well is that the laws of the Most High have been abolished. Therefore, I'm completely unclear what this future Antichrist figure would actually accomplish since the work he's coming to do has already been done. In essence, we're currently living in the era of the fourth beast. The only future event would be the eventual removal of the dominion of this current kingdom. Daniel chapter 7, 25, once more. And he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of times. Verse 25 says the saints or the Israelites will be given into his hand. And you compare that Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beasts that ascend out of the bottomless pit will make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit is part of the fourth beast or the fourth kingdom to rise. The two witnesses are the saints, which are also the nation of Israel that was split into two, Israel and Judah, which also is the same as Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemy, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. It was given unto him to make war with the saints, to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Daniel says he will speak words against the Most High. Revelation says a mouth was given to speak great things and blasphemy. These are all the same things. Revelation 13 says the beast would make war with the saints and overcome them. Revelation 11 about the two witnesses says the beast would make war against them and overcome them. Daniel is talking about the Israelites. Revelation 11 talking about the two witnesses are also the same Israelites. These are just analogies. All analogies will lead you to the same story. The Bible consistently presents the same story through various analogies and illustrations. When you encounter individuals who offer different stories, meanings, and interpretations, it should become evident to you that they lack a true understanding of the subject matter. In reality, the Bible boils down to one complete, cohesive narrative. It's the same story told over and over again. Whether you're talking about the woman at the well, you're talking about the Good Samaritan, all these stories are all analogies of Israel. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 24. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumes the chaff, their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Most High of hosts and despised the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, the anger of the Most High is kindled against his people. He has stretched forth his hand against them and had smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the street. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the ends of the earth, and behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber or sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes broken. The interpretation is as follows. Children of Israel face suffering due to their abandonment of the laws and the commandments of the Most High. They despise the act of following and neglected to listen to the words of the Most High. Consequently, the anger of the Most High was directed towards his own people resulting in even the hills trembling. As a result, we continue to endure hardships of poverty with little hope, awaiting the day when the Most High would deliver and save his people. This reoccurring theme is expressed by different prophets throughout time. They all saw the same vision with different analogies. Part of the punishment is to suffer without a calendar and suffer without knowing the correct feast days because the fourth beast 
or the Antichrist bloodline has changed times and laws. We are given into their hands because we refuse to obey the Most High's commandments. So now we are forced to serve the beast system until the Most High returns. Hosea chapter 2 verse 11. I will cause her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. True to his word, the feast days have ended. Verse 14, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to her. And I will give her vineyards from there and a valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. This is what we're waiting for. This is the same story as in Isaiah. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. Hosea says, I will give her vineyards from thence and an acre for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth in the wilderness, also called the thousand year reign. The true calendar will be stored. We will get what we're looking for. We have to be patient and wait and do all the things that are written in the commandments and the laws, all the things that gave to Moses that we are capable of doing without worrying about the things that were taking from us purposely. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.